hi everyone so in this uh, pandemic era we are forced to work from home and uh, the major issue when we are working from home uh, especially the internet so if internet goes down we'll all have a tough time uh, working and uh, usually it happens when we are in meeting so your internet connection goes down and you are out of the meeting so that's an kind of embarrassing situation so normally nobody would like to have uh, that sort of issues so now you see in in case of your corporate uh, setup you'll have multiple vendors serving the internet so if one goes down other uh, backend uh, connection will be taken or or it will be load balanced so that's kind of a difficult setup to have at home but uh, now uh, these days we are having a load balancer uh, which is not that expensive so you can purchase it online and uh, start using it here i'm here uh, to explain you one such product which is a tp link load balancer so obviously i i didn't see any other product uh, online uh, to review <clears throat> here i have one broadband connection which is uh, served by bsnl so which cost me around uh, 400 rupees for uh, um, approximately 60 mbps and uh, here another connection that's uh, 100 mbps which cost me 1200 rupees uh, per month and both <coughs> rj45 output will uh, go to this uh, this is a tp link device which act as a load balancer what it does is it load balance the packets between either of these switches ons so if one packet goes here and other packet will go here ultimately what happens is since i am having 160 mps um, if i sum it up both 100 mps ps over here and 60 mps here so i'll get around 150 to 160 mps uh, per second speed so that's what i can achieve with this load balancer um one more option is you can make it as an active passive so one will be active always so other one will be standby for example this will be active since it is a 100 mbps connection if this goes down other will come up so and start serving so you can set up the any way you want uh, that i will show you uh, shortly let's start exploring this uh, load balancer so i am not you know a uh, fan of tp link or uh, tp link is not going to give me anything about it but um, it's just a product which i found in the internet which suits my requirement as well as it uh, fits in my budget so i was planning around 5k within 5k i just wanted a gigabit uh, vpn router with uh, load balancing capabilities so um hence i found that this is the only product available so uh, you can just uh, go on such an internet if you find uh, any other device and that uh, fits your know, budget and as well as the requirement you can go with that uh, but i'll be showing uh, uh, how to configure this product uh, uh, since i have this one okay so i think if you buy anything else the configuration uh, may not change drastically it's more or less same thanks uh, let's continue that you have to come to the browser and um, https 182.168.0.1 and you will get this login screen if it is for the first time you are logging to this device device lets you configure the password you can create your own password but in this case i have logged into this device already i am getting this page i will log in with my username as admin and my password now this is the first screen i get the moment i connect to the device so it shows that i have got two wan links which are active right now which says link up link up in both the cases both are active here this is the overall performance of the device and this is the overall statistics in the graph and apart from that you will get to see the hardware version which is ER605 is the device and here is the actual firmware version 
and system is up from past one day. Let us see the network. The moment you click on van, you have one, two, three, four, five ports. All are Ethernet ports. You have an option of selecting which one is van. You have once you select this, this particular Ethernet port will become van port. So since I selected these two as van ports, both ETH1 and ETH2 acts as an van port where I have connected my broadband connection Ethernet cable, which comes from my FTTH ONU. See here, this is the configuration. This device needs my user ID and password to log in to FTTH and whereas other one doesn't need that it's a dynamic IP mode now both are connected and both are acting as active connections so if you come here which is the LAN configuration section wherein this is the device IP address which is our router IP address itself which also acts as a routing IP also our DNS IP for the client here this is a DSCP lease address so which is configured to 192.168.0.100 to 192.168.0.199 these are the range from within which our client devices will get the IP let us see are the list of devices connected to this these are the devices which have been connected to this uh, router already you could even reserve the address for a particular device if you want a particular device to get a specific address you can even configure over here you can see the MAC address and the associated IP address for that and the description why you are going to do that so those things can be configured via this. So you have a MAC filtration possibility. You can even configure ports as port mirrors. In port mirrors, what happens? Both the port uh, packets will be mirrored. And you have an option of selecting ingress mirror, egress mirror. That's even possible with this. And you are allowed to create VLANs by default you have to have a VLAN because uh, our two WAN ports are VLAN 1 which is auto configured since I connected uh, converted this, that as uh, WAN ports so you could create IP groups you get you can even create time range of the operational time range VPN IP protocol service types all these are possible using the device now let us go to the transmission section where you have an option of con <coughs> making this device as a load balancer. This particular option which enable load balancing, the moment you enable this and save, entire device router will act as a load balancing. That means both our WAN connection will become active and active. So our client machines will get combined bandwidth of both of our broadband in my case one broadband is providing me 100 mbps link other one is providing me 30 mbps so combiningly i should be getting around 130 mbps per second speed so rest of the configurations i have an option of configuring firewall behavior control so what time uh, you, you can do the web filtering all these options are provided with this VPN connections you have an option of connect configuring IPsec VPN L2TP PPTP VPNs you can even configure dynamic DNS so these are the options with this router since I have configured 
this load balancer so now I should be getting an overall bandwidth of 130 Mbps plus so let us test that using speedtest.net So in this particular test, uh, I'm not sure why I'm getting a uh, ping delay of 262 milliseconds. Okay, I'm getting 129.59 Mbps uh, download speed and 102 Mbps upload speed. That's as per our uh, uh, what we uh, expected. So we are getting that uh, output. Great. Uh, if you have any doubt or any information you expect me to pass on, please comment and I will try to reply to your comment with the details uh, if I have. Have a nice time. Thanks for checking this video. Bye.